What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another weekly live stream. Let me just uh, make sure that I am live real quick. I think the audio this week, there we go. Pause that, I don't wanna be echoey. Um, all right, so I think this week, hopefully, hopefully I got my audio coming out, both speakers, and you know, I'll wait till like, you know, halfway through the stream to realize that I didn't get that set up correctly. Uh, but first off, Apollo, Annie 8 and I 8 and Chef Rob, thanks for being here. Finally, I'm gonna catch a live. Apollo actually made it early. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for being here. As always, once again, if you didn't catch the pinned message, um, it's Q&A week. So we're just gonna kind of hang out. And uh, if any of you guys got any questions, make sure to uh, drop those over there in the uh, the chat on the right side of your screen or down under the video if you're watching on mobile. What I don't even know what that looks like. Um, but yeah, we do this every Tuesday at noon 30 Eastern. What is up, K-Way Shop? If anybody's on TikTok, uh, go give that guy a follow. Live streaming every, I swear, <clears throat> I pop on TikTok every now and then and I'll just be scrolling. K-Way Shop's live. This man is consistent. Go give him a follow. Um, what was I saying? If you're new here, every every Tuesday, noon, 30 Eastern time, every other week is a Q&A, and then every other week we do a, uh, a topic. What's up, Michelle? Thanks for popping in, as always. How's everybody's week going? We got 19 people in here. Don't forget to hit that like button for me. Um, we finally have got pretty much settled in to the new apartment. Um, the garage, amazing. Can't wait to uh, sprinkle that into some videos. Uh, have like probably my favorite reselling setup that I've ever had. Um, so excited to get the ball rolling and get back to get back to business. If you guys saw on the second channel, I posted a um, 100 pair listing marathon. Uh, it took me four hours. Got 100 pairs listed over on Twitch, and that was the first 100 pairs that I have uh, listed in probably two weeks. So. Sales, sales over this past, past weekend, weekend finally starting to pick up a little bit. I've been listing 15 every single day. Um, I see a couple people mentioning. If you can't see over here, got a little, you know, I, I am the, I am always going to be shamelessly plugging. And if I can do it right behind me without having to bring it up, I'm going to do it. Uh, me and Ethan, the college reseller, recently launched a podcast. It's called In the Loop, um, a reseller's podcast. The first episode is up. I would love if you could go uh, check it out. It's on YouTube, it's, it's on Spotify, Spotify, it's on Apple Music, Music just wherever, wherever, wherever you get your podcasts. Um, it's it's going to be a fun, fun one. We actually are going to be recording episode number two right after this live stream ends. So uh, look forward to that and uh, would love to hear your feedback. Um, I've, we've got nothing but good feedback from the first episode, uh, but if you guys could leave us a review, a rating, whatever that looks like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, That's that's that would just mean the world to us. Um, Luna Girl, what is the most, or Laguna, Laguna Girl, sorry, let me get that name right. What is the most you think is reasonable for buying shoes, and what are the best sites? Um, so, first question of the day, let's kick it off. Um, my a best reasonable price for buying shoes. I'd say a good reasonable price is to keep it around 30% of what you think you can sell it for. You know, that's, that's just, just what, what I'm working, working at. at. A, a lot, lot of people, people just depending on what your business model is, a lot of people, um, especially for people, people that sell brand new shoes, like the like, like them Amazon, Amazon sellers, sellers out there that sell brand new shoes, shoes. and they're working on like 20% margins. So, so they're, for them, their buy cost is 80%. But um, in the used shoe category, that's why I love it. We, it's pretty, pretty easy to find shoes at about 30% of their market value. And then mark it up to uh, the full full market value. So I like to keep it around 30%. Um, what are the best sites? Um, in terms of selling sites, I really like eBay. I am a sucker. I'm a sucker for eBay. I love eBay. Uh, Poshmark is a, uh, is, a, is a close second. Those are the only two sites that I sell on at the moment. So big fan of eBay and Poshmark. Um, but listen to the podcast. It was amazing. Keep it up. Can't wait. Ethan, if you're watching, I am looking forward to uh, recording here in just about an hour. Um, what's up, Beatrice Esparza? Thanks for popping in. Me and Carly did have a great weekend. I hope you had a good one as well. We got an echo. Uh-oh. Do I need to mute something? Uh, -bum -bum -bum. I sure do. I sure do. I'm so sorry about that. I'm so sorry about that. Um, that should be fixed. See, I can't go. I, it's impossible for me to go a week without having at least one technical hiccup. Um, but the the audio should be fixed now. Audio should be fixed now. 
Um, but what's up, Junk Monkey? Just went live on his channel last night. If you guys want to go check that out, uh, click. I think you can click on his channel or search it up there. Um, that was a fun time, fun time. Cole McGinnis also hearing the echo. I think I got it figured out. Um, Sarah, I subscribed to podcast, but not had a chance to listen yet. Looking forward to it. Um, I, I'm looking forward to you listen to it as well. I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, but a bum bum junk monkey five X with the realization I might have to settle for three X. There you go. The, the higher, the higher, the X, the better. That's uh, the beautiful thing about reselling. Not many businesses out there. You can consistently, um, three, four, five, 10, 20 X your money. Uh, but it's very possible in uh, reselling. You just talked to Junk Monkey. We went on his live last night and he found like a Cabbage Patch doll for, uh, I can't remember what he said he paid, like less than $10, I believe. And it's a $400 Cabbage Patch doll, like $350, $400. It's insane. Like what other business can you do that in? Uh, but up, bum bum So what's everybody up to? Uh, we got 32 people in here, 12 likes. You guys know the drill. Hit the like button. How's everybody's sales been this weekend? Um, we find anything good at the thrifts. We have any questions? Just If you just want to say hi, just just drop a little hello ski down in the chitty chat. Um, thrifting for me has been a little, um, not slow, but... I just haven't been out much. I've been, I, I've had a few wholesale um, orders come in and I've just been working through those and I haven't really been thrifting too much. We still are right across the street. Well, not even right across the street. There's a Goodwill literally in our parking parking lot at the new place and uh, it's been good to me. Other than that, have not been thrifting anywhere else. It's, uh, it's been it's been nice, uh, nice little relaxing uh, past couple weeks, but the sales are definitely, <clears throat> definitely slacking because of, because of that um does ebay vacation mode affect your sales when you come back i don't believe so i do not think that ebay vacation mode is going to affect your sales whatsoever um for those of you guys that don't know if you uh plan on going on vacation you're going to need to change your handling time as well so just i don't even turn on vacation mode if we're being honest because usually uh unless i'm going out of town for like a very extended period of time like longer than like 10 15 days uh, handling time, 10, 15 business days. Um, but usually I just change my handling time and I just leave it at that. Uh, I don't think eBay really cares much about, um, your handling time. Obviously it plays a factor in the algorithm and it's going to favor people that have same or next day handling time. Uh, but it really just cares that you're active on the site. So if you're just consistently listing, especially on vacation, like if right before you leave for vacation, you build up a nice draft bank and you're able to just publish those drafts every single day, um, even at that extended handling time, uh, you should still be seeing some pretty consistent sales. Uh, definitely slower than normal. But once you get back and turn that vacation, turn that handling time off or back to normal, you should be back to uh, back to normal sales activity. Another th another tip on vacation mode is while you're out on vacation, you know I, I don't I'm not super like uh, on top of this. I'll be honest with you because when I'm on vacation, I just uh, I try to tune out everything work related. But if you if you um, have a second, if you have a, a, a chance to change your handling time every day, um, I th I can't remember. I think after ten handling. 10 days handling time, it jumps to 15. So like if you have the 15 day, once you're under the 10 day, change it to 10 day. And then I believe 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, you can change to all of those. So every day, just change your handling time to keep your handling time exact. Uh, because the lower the handling time, the uh, the more sales you're gonna get. You're gonna be ranking a little higher because eBay's gonna see that you're gonna be uh, shipping it sooner rather than later. Um, so yeah, that's, that's vacation mode 101 for you guys. <laughs> vacation mode 101. Uh, da, 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 da. I found a La Laguna girl found a Cabbage Patch doll too, but how do I find its value? Uh, I think Junk Monkey could refer you to, um, I can't remember the person, Junk Monkey will drop her username down in the chat. It's something Cabbage Life, I, I don't know. Um, I did retain a little information from the, from the conversation with Junk Monkey last night. If you look at the, <clears throat> look at the number on the back of the head, that has the mold. If it's a mold number 19, you struck some gold. I got a little pretzel, like right here. It's getting a little, it's getting a little on my nerves. Um, best way to deodorize odor from shoes. So, um, just a typical deodorizer is usually going to do the trick. You can use like a Febreze or something. Uh, but if it is like, first off, 
that's one of the things I try to stay away from is uh, nasty odors, um, especially like cigarettes, marijuana, um, just like this, the dirty, musky, like this person played basketball all the time in these shoes. I try to stay away from those smells. Um, if running it through the washing machine doesn't help, coffee beans are a great trick. I don't know if the coffee beans, coffee beans work. I'm sure somebody can verify this in the chat. I've never really tried the coffee bean, the coffee bean trick on a pair of shoes that were like musky from like running and sweat and like just that kind of musky. But the coffee beans work very well for cigarettes and um, marijuana smell in shoes. Um, just like take the take the unground coffee beans and stick them in a sock and then like tie that sock up and stuff it in the shoe overnight. And usually that's going to get rid of the smell uh, for the most part. Uh, there's some other tricks like spraying with vodka. Um, I keep a little spritz bottle of vodka down in my uh, uh, tool cleaning or my shoe cleaning supply kit. Uh, not not for the the, the shot. Um, as I'm getting, you know, bored of cleaning shoes, just, just to, uh, just for, just for spraying some shoes that need cleaned. I learned that trick from somebody on Instagram. Um, I, I know that putting them in a paper bag and putting them in the freezer, uh, that works pretty well. Uh, many ways to, uh, many ways to get that smell out, but you know, just a natural deodorizer, uh, some vodka, some coffee beans. Those are like the top tier tricks. Uh, know what? Have you noticed slower sales in the fast fast few weeks? We've heard there's been several eBay glitches due to system updates. I've heard the same thing, but I cannot verify. I honestly, I'm not a I'm not a great person to ask because, like I like I've mentioned, I just haven't been consistently listing for the past couple weeks because of the move and getting settled in and all that good stuff. But um, I can say that since I started consistently listing over the past four or five days, um, sales have been starting to trickle back in at a at a normal a normal speed. Um, but yeah, I'm sure if there's, I've heard of the eBay glitches, so I'm sure that, um, it has a factor to play in some of the slower sales. We're also trickling into the summer months, which are typically slower, uh, for clothing and shoes and that kind of thing. But all I can recommend is just to keep on listing because there's no matter what's going on, there's always going to be ups and downs and ups and downs and ups and downs. As long as you're trending up, you're all good. Um, just keep listing posting quality inventory. That is the key. That is the key to the success on the eBay. Um, where are we at? Dun, 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 dun. Also found a still in box Teletubby. I haven't heard or seen of the Teletubbies in a long time. That's pretty, that's pretty cool find. I didn't even, I wish I had a, I wish I had a toy Teletubby as a kid. I can't say that I ever did. I just watched the show. I don't even think my parents liked me watching the show, for being all too honest. I think my parents were anti-Barney and anti-Teletubby tel Teletubbies. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I believe that they uh, they weren't too keen on those two shows. Um, eBay traditionally update during holidays that are normally slow anyway. There we go. Uh, Robbie Smith, I've started to niche down to shoes and a huge plug for your new listing channel. If I have several questions from it, should I ask today or is it better to, to comment there for YouTube to see comments? Uh, Robbie, you can, you can ask all the questions right here. I, uh, with that channel, I don't really care much for the algorithm. If we're being honest, I, I know that those, those videos are not going to rank in the algorithm. You're not going to, uh, I, I'm not going to be able to get enough likes or enough comments to make those videos pop out on YouTube because it's a very segmented type of person that wants to, uh, to wants to watch those. I just really want them there available for people that need, uh, someone to work with a coworker, a little productivity boost. So I'm not too worried about the comments. I would love for you to ask any and all of the questions you have right here and we can get those answered today. Um, junk monkey for smelly due to things other than smoke seal in a past plastic bag and freeze plastic bag and freeze. See, I, I was close paper bag. I think the paper bag works too, but I, I couldn't quite remember if the plastic bag was the right option. But, uh, if junk monkey says it's right, it is right. By golly. I've been using an ozone machine to get rid of smells. Amazing. Gone in 15 minutes. I, one at once upon a time when I was still trying to learn how to get smells out of shoes, I had a nice, a uh, pair of PF flyers that I had bought and they smelled like bad cigarette smoke. I got them, uh, got them online and they just, they just reeked. Let me tell you, they, they reeked. And I posted a question on my Instagram story and I had just asking how to get that smell out. And I had so many people tell me to get an ozone machine. Uh, so maybe I need to invest in a nice little ozone machine. 
Um, Samantha. Dalton, I have vans with red marker price on the white midsole that won't budge. I tried acetone, Gugon, magic eraser, bleach, even a Q-tip dipped in gasoline. <laughs> uh, any other ideas? Um, hmm, that's tough. I hate it when thrift stores write on the midsole like that where you can see. I would bring that up to uh, the manager or whoever next time I went to that thrift store make sure that they don't do that anymore. Uh, because that's just dumb. Like even if someone's buying them not to resell, if they're just buying them for themselves, they still have to deal with the, the price that's written blatantly on the outside of the shoes. Um, honestly, I would just paint over it. I, I don't know that anything else is going to do much good. I'm sure that the methods that you've used have doled it down pretty, pretty well. Um, maybe try a very fine grit sandpaper. Um, I know that the, the vans have like a textured surface. So if you, if you sand it down, it might have an issue with that, but, um, just get like, a. I I don't know. I'm not super educated on how wells different types of paints work, but I do have some Angelus paint that I keep on hand. I very rarely use it, but when in the in that case, I would, I would just paint over it with some white paint and let it dry. And if it needs a few coats, then just do that. Um, but you know, the sandpaper, the sandpaper might work. Um, but other than all the methods that you used, I, I, I really don't know. That's really frustrating. Uh, what's up, Jody? Thanks for making it. Uh, thanks for popping in. Uh, if it's on the bottom, I wouldn't care. Denatured alcohol on a magic erasers works miracles for marks on shoes. There you go. Let's try denatured alcohol on a magic eraser. Um, I know Drew, my buddy Drew uses, um, it's a degreaser, totally awesome, degreaser from the Dollar Tree. He says it works wonders on Vans midsoles. I've tried it and uh, I, I probably just didn't put enough effort into it if we're being honest because there's so many people that use it and say that they they swear by it. Uh, but I just I just haven't got around to really using it very consistently. Uh, I'd, so maybe try that. It's only a dollar at the Dollar Tree. So, well, sorry, a dollar 25 at the Dollar 25 tree. So that could be it. Who knows? Um, but if not, the denatured alcohol on a magic racer, I'd, I'd, I'd trust old junk monkey. Um, that being said, guys, I'm, um, I'm already caught up. What's everybody up to today? How, how's sales been? If you're lurking, I know we got 40 people in here and, uh, and I just want to, if you, if you want to just pop in and say hi, it would, it would just really mean the world to me. Um, I did need to mention this week that, um, I've, mo I've talked about it a couple live streams in a row now that I had, uh, members only videos up but I never submitted the thing that like made them available. Um, so they were never available. I just was talking about them and you guys probably went to my channel and just didn't see it there. And so now, now they're actually published and you'll get a little badge next to you in the, in the live stream when we do these every week and uh, we'll get some special emojis um, available, but they're, they're up now. I think the next one that I'm going to post over there is probably going to be a garage tour. Um, just a nice little tour of the garage get to see um, how I have it set up for the reselling business. You'll see it through videos. I'm not hiding it behind like a paywall or anything, but you'll, you'll see it in YouTube videos, but I want to make like a dedicated, uh, dedicated video over there. So you guys can like, you know, get a little behind the scenes action. Most of the stuff that I'm posting there isn't really edited. It's just, it's just, you know, just, just real behind the scenes, raw footage. Uh, I've done some unboxings, done some mystery boxes. I have some coming in the mail, probably going to do open those on camera, uh, post them over there. Uh, what's up, JC Trade? Let's go. Uh, Sarah, I became top seller, then switched on free returns. So now top seller plus trying it out because I'm scared it's going to open up return floodgates. Can I ask why you offer 60 day returns? Uh, just to rank higher in search. And most people don't really return things. I um, My return rate is in the 2% range. I don't know the exact number, but it's it's less than 3%. If you factor in Poshmark, it's probably less than less than two percent, probably closer to like one to one point five percent. Most people just no, most people just know their size, and providing that extra um, cushion of hey, if this comes in and for some reason it doesn't fit me, I'm covered. I can return this. It just adds a little bit of you know peace of mind uh, to the buyers and gives them more confidence, and they will you know in turn hopefully make a purchase. It's just one, one little piece of the puzzle, one, one brick on the foundation as to, uh, how to get your, 
uh, shoes ranking higher. Um, it's an easy way. I, we talk about this a lot on how to make a basic listing stand out from a, a flooded market, like um, like the vans we were talking about with uh, Samantha. Um, I'm sure that there's probably a ton, unless it's like a rare pair of vans, but like there's probably a ton of vans listed right now. And one of the easiest ways to sell your vans for a decent price, even though there's probably tons of people listed for lower than that price is to just rank it higher in search because a lot of people want to find what they're looking for and purchase it and move on. And an easy way to do that, I always talk about item specifics and making the title right, good, well-lit pictures, maybe promoted listing. Um, the, your, your return policy is another thing that goes into that. Your return policy is going to help rank because it's, it's favorable to the buyer. eBay wants to present the, the best buyer experience as possible um, for anybody shopping on the website. So the people that offer... Uh, the best return policies, the, the, that ship the fastest, that are the most active on the site, that they know any time that they get a message, they're responding to those messages. It, it's Everything goes into that to put you a little bit higher in the uh, the search algorithm. Uh, have to run, but glad I could catch you live. Junk Monkey, thanks for stopping in. Peace out. Um, already seen a big difference in sales. Awesome. Uh, L Laguna Girl, I haven't started selling yet, really. Only on offer up with a little success. Everyone wants to pay nothing or super low offers. I've never really seen success success with offer up. Uh, fun fun story, fun fact. When I first started reselling, not really first started. When I first started only selling shoes, I sold on so many platforms. I sold on eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, Facebook, and Offer Up five platforms. And I didn't use a cross listing service. I was manually posting five listings for every single pair of shoes that I used. Um, that pff, I, I don't know how I did that for so long. Uh, Mercari or not Mercari, but offer up was definitely the first platform that I dropped because I saw sales over there, but I really didn't see very consistent sales. It was like 1%. I, I had so many listings on offer up and wasn't getting very many sales, but it, it did trickle in and it was, it was nice. But Definitely wasn't worth the effort. I I currently have things listed for sale like around the house that I'm trying to get rid of on offer up and I just I just can't move it. I have stuff listed on I mean obviously it's probably stuff that nobody wants. I'm trying to sell two printers because I don't want to ship them. The comps on eBay are like $150 for both models of printers and I have them listed for $40 now on Facebook, offer up and uh next door and nothing. Uh, I got a bed frame, can't sell. Um I got something else. I don't know. That's off topic. Anyway, um Listing questions, trying to follow you when you are listing. Can you do a play-by-play -play on what you are clicking to be so fast or using templates, even though you are using cell similar? Uh, I do not use templates. This is a good question. Um, I don't use templates. I have a store that, again, something that we talk about almost every week. Um, I have a store that's built up of a bunch of listings that are really good, high quality listings. They have all that in specifics filled out. Um, and I have, I'm, I, I, like I mentioned before, I've wholesaled off a bunch, so my inventory is pretty low at the moment, but I still have over 500 and some uh, currently listed items, and most of them are really good listings. They have good titles put together, and they have all the item specifics that I know filled out, and uh, it's a good variety of shoes. So like 90% of the shoes that I'm listing, I have another pair of shoes that is very identical to those shoes. So I can just, I can literally just find the most identical pair of shoes, try to find something that um, it's, it's listed in the same category. Like if it's a comfort shoe, I need it listed. I need to find a comfort shoe. If it's an athletic shoe, I need to find an athletic shoe, make sure it's the same gender, this and that. And um, if it's the same material, better. If it's the same color, better. Like as as close to the same shoe that I can find, that's what I'm using. I'm selling similar and then I'm uploading photos. I don't care if it's the same brand, but that's nice. Um, but I am just, I'm finding the most similar one. I'm uploading my my new pictures in and then I'm changing anything that needs changed. Um, and, it, and if you do it that way, it's a slow, it's a slow start because you have to build up an inventory of good listings and you can even go to your unsold or your sold listings or unsold listings. If you sell on other platforms and you have to delete them off eBay. Um, so if, if you're selling through things and you're losing that, that backlog of good listings, you can still sell similar off of unsold and your sold listings. Um, so just, it might be slower at first. But just making sure that you make every listing as good as you can, filling out as many item specifics that you know and uh, making them as good as possible. Eventually, you'll be able to sell similar off something in your closet or something in your store. Um, but again, no, no templates. Just been doing this a long time. I do think that doing it on the computer, if you're doing it on your phone, uh, 
you're being stubborn. <laughs> I know a lot of people like it, but like I, the computer is miles faster. You can have different tabs open. You can have different windows open. Uh, it's, it's nice. Travis S had a slow weekend, only about 20 shipped out this morning. Views were down. So I'm attributing it to just people being traveling for holiday summer and not on eBay as much. I'd agree. You know, we're entering into that a little slumber slowdown. Uh, Profit Monsters, my man, what is up? Love you too, bro. I'm a big fan of you. I can't wait for that haul video that you were talking about on your, uh, on your Instagram story. I can't wait for it. So I'm sure anybody in the chat here, they also can't wait for it. So if you're, uh, if you're here, that, that blue name over there, Profit Monsters, I got a mod in the chat. That's weird. Uh, make sure you go subscribe to him. He's going to be posting another video for the first time in forever. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Luna Girl agreed. Not much worth the effort. JC Trade, can you recommend a reliable re label printer? Yep, I got one right there. Uh, Rolo, there, if you need a wireless one, um, I recommend their wireless, like wireless meaning like you need to print from your phone or a laptop or something. Uh, but if you don't need it wireless, they're wired printer. I've used both of them. I used the wired printer for, for years, probably not years, probably like two years. And then, uh, got the, got the wireless one, been using it for probably almost a year now. And both of them are great. Only, only reason to upgrade to the wireless version is if you, again, need to print from your phone, but the wired version is still amazing. I think I have a link to it down in the description, I wanna say. Yeah, under reselling supplies, thermal printer. There you go. Um, hey, th Jody, hey, thanks for mentioning square mode for pictures last week. Forgot to set to my new phone to one by one, so I changed it last week and I saved it. Uh, and it saved me a lot of time. Only had to edit two out of 80 pictures. Let's go, yep. That's a, that's a huge um, time saver. A lot of people look over that. Um, but the, the selling platforms, really like having a square image don't really like they they need a square image i think you can un upload rectangular images to um ebay but just to be safe i like to take pictures in square mode then they're easily transferable you know what the center of it's going to be because in search i believe it shows up square but you know if you're not already taking pictures in square mode go for it uh oh michelle is the first official dwd supporter thank you so much it really means the world to me. I, I, I appreciate it. Again, uh, I'm not going to plug it too much, but if, if anybody gets over there and you're watching the videos, please, 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 please let me know in the comments what you want to see over there because I'll make it happen. Um, if you see that little, that little blue star over next to your name, I'm thinking about changing those because the, the star upgrades longer that you're a supporter. Um, and I'm thinking about changing them from like the Jordan number so like you'll start out with a jordan one and then it'll upgrade to a jordan two and then a jordan three up to like jordan 12 or whatever i think that'll be fun but michelle thank you so much i i seriously appreciate it um tons tons of uh behind the scenes content coming your way and hopefully if we get enough people over there we can do a members only live stream i can bring some of you guys on like if we had a smaller little community over there it'd be easier to just drop a link we'll get some people do some one-on-one -on -one work that'll be fun anyway back to the chat um jc trade you are very welcome uh, Jody misses seeing Drew, Profit Monsters. Um, me too. Me too. He he lives like ten minutes away, and I'm I miss him. I never get to see him. It's crazy. Um, DC Hunter, I have a question for you. How fast do you sell Hoka's Brooks and On Clouds? Um, so that's gonna that's just gonna depend, right? That's gonna depend on the model. I use this analogy a lot. Car, uh, shoes are like cars. Everybody wants the newest model. Um, the, the, the 2023 Toyota, Toyota Corolla is going to be selling more frequently and, uh, for a lot higher of a price than a 27, 2007 Toyota Corolla. Um, so shoes are the same way. Every single year they come out with a new model of, uh, Hoka Clifton, Brooks Ghosts, um, on cloud surfer. Like they come out with all these new models over and over. So the newest ones are always going to sell quicker and for more money. Uh, the older ones. All of these brands are getting into their like mature stage. So there's a lot of older models on the market. Um, th those are the ones that you're probably seeing pop up the most often in thrift stores. And those can, you know, th those are all still going to sell. Don't get me wrong. All of those, these are, they're fantastic brands. All of them are still going to sell if you can get them at a proper price. Um, that being said, uh, the newer ones are going to sell faster. Newer ones are going to sell for more money. Um, amateur flipping. Hey Dalton, how do you upload your photos from an iPhone to windows PC? Whenever I try, it says that I need to download some software, did that and it still does not work. Let me see if I can get, um, an Amazon link. I use this bad boy right here. 
It is a, it has the iPhone attachment here and it's a, it's a USB stick. And so basically I take all my photos on my phone. Uh, let me see iPhone to USB adapter. Oh, that's not what I'm looking for. I, I it's, it's, it's so hard. I don't think a lot of people, especially in my comments sometimes realize how hard it is to talk live and uh, think about multiple different things at the same time. <laughs> iPhone uh, thumb drive. That's what we're looking for. I think all of these will work. I don't think that the, uh, I don't think the one that I specifically have is still available, but here's one. Let me get a little link for you guys. Share, copy, bada bing. Now I gotta find my stream. Uh oh, but up, up, oh. There we go. There's the live. Bum, bum, bum. I promise you this is going to be worth the wait. Let me tell you. Paste. There we go. All right. There, there's the link um, to something similar to this. Basically, I take all my photos on my phone in the square mode, upload them to this, and then I just plug it into the computer and I. I list from the, the, the flash drive. I don't copy them to my computer. There's one downside. When you copy a square photo to this, it copies four files. So basically it, it has like all the adjust, adjustments as files. It's weird. But um, if you just line up the columns and delete the left column and then um, delete the left column again, um, if, if you buy this and you want me to show you how I do that. Just shoot me a message, shoot me a comment, um, probably a message on Instagram so I can just respond with a video. I'll show you a video. It takes like 10 seconds to delete all the extra files. But when I first tried it, it was like, it looked super overwhelming, uh, but it's it's so easy. That's how I do it. I use that thumbstick right there. Um, I've been selling more Coca, Clifton 8 than 9. Interesting. Um, Robbie Smith, how do you download? Oh, I just got behind. Whoops. Potential video topic benefits of reselling, such as recycling, repurposing, saving it from landfills. I honestly find a great joy that I keep people away from buying new. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a very solid point. A lot of people are into the, the reselling for the, uh, the benefit of keeping things out of the landfills. Very, very hot topic. Um, might, might add that to the, uh, might add that to the list. Um, so how do you clean insoles of Converse and Vans? No matter what I do, they look dingy. Uh, I really don't clean insoles of Converse and Vans. I, if they look disgusting, like they're, they're just like caked up with, uh, I call it foot cheese. <laughs> um, I just, I don't buy them because it's, it's so hard. Most of those insoles don't really come out. Um, you run through a washing machine or if you have that like drill attachment that I use, if you like spray your soap on the insole and then get the drill attachment down in there. Uh, maybe you can get to it that way, uh, but I try to stay away from them if they're too, too dirty. DC Hunter, I learn a lot from you, Mr. Tornado. I'll make some videos in the future thanks to you. Love it. I can't wait. Can't wait. Um, I, don't, I don't like the future word, though. I, I think that you need to just start now, you know? You can't. You're never going to be ready. You got to start when you're not ready get that video up but i'm i'm happy i'm, I'm looking forward to it amateur flipping thank you i will check that out we are we are caught up somebody who was it somebody was asking um oh never mind it was robbie we already answered that question um what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. Uh, I will say though that we have 28 likes 53 people watching don't forget hit the hit the like button for me um if you are, if you if you're just popping in and you haven't noticed already, you haven't seen the top line of <laughs> foot cheese. Yeah, the <laughs> I see. I get that reaction every time I say that. I'll tell Carly. I'm like, I can't get these shoes. There's too much foot cheese in them, and she'll look at me like she wants to wants to tee you if uh, if you know what that means. Uh, but anyway, if you're if you're just popping in and you don't see the TV behind me, me and Ethan started a new podcast. In the Loop, a reseller's podcast. I would love, I would love for you to check it out. Um, another thing, I think the second line, if you haven't already noticed, I started a second channel. It's called Listing with Dalton. It's just, it's just where I list. You know, I go live on Twitch. I will probably be live in two days, so you can follow me on Twitch at Dealing with Dalton. And I just, I just list on eBay. There's, there's nothing more to it. It's not, it's not like this. It's not really a conversation. It's just, I'm just working. I just want to be a coworker for you guys. And, um, that's an easy way to do it. I, I record those videos and post them on my second channel listing with Dalton. So if you, uh, if you need somebody to work with, I'm your guy. 
Um, that being said, if, if, if you're new here, we do this every noon 30 on Tuesdays. Uh, today's a Q and a day. So if you're in the chat, if you're watching right now and you have any questions at all, I don't care what it's about. It doesn't even have to be about shoe reselling. You can ask me any question in the world. I probably won't answer any question in the world, but I'll at least entertain any question in the world. Uh, just drop them over in the chat. I would, uh, I would love to hear them. Uh, let me know how your day's going. Would love to, uh, love to hear what kind of sales are coming in, what, what you found this week. Just, uh, just, just, trying to build a little, little little dealing with Dalton community here. That's that's the goal of these little live streams. Um, but with that being said, um, if we don't have any questions, this might be a this might be an early ender. Cause I was scrolling through my YouTube comments. I try to answer all the YouTube comments in depth on these lives and I didn't have any. I didn't have any. This this I think I've just been slacking on videos. I think that's my problem. Uh, but the video tomorrow, I'm telling you guys, the video that I post tomorrow, I might even post it today. I might I might be feeling, no, I, I definitely can't do that. I don't have time to finish that edit. But the video I'm posting tomorrow is going to be an exciting one. You guys need to, need to buckle up because it's a video that I've been prepping for months, not months, weeks, maybe a month, and I'm finally getting it posted. And it's gonna be the beginning of uh, a great series for this channel. I can't wait for it. Um, Flipping Junior, do you cross post as you're listing on eBay, or do you wait? Um, I just, I use the uh, the list perfectly extension. I think I can just, I'll just show you an example. Let me get, let me get eBay pulled up. Listings, um, I need to add that to the uh, live stream. Browser, um, okay, nope, cancel, cancel that, need to delete that. Remove, yes. Add, um, but um, bum bum. Where's window capture? There's window capture. Now we can capture that. Okay, let me make that bigger, and then let me move that in behind me, and then we'll just make me smaller. Boom. Okay, you guys can see this. This is my eBay page. Um, this is this is what List Perfectly has going for them. This is the best feature about List Perfectly is their Chrome extension. I don't upload to their website. And once my items are listed, I just hit that start selecting and then select all the items that I've listed. I can literally pick as many as I want. Hit stop. I only list a Poshmark, but if you list anywhere else, you can select them. And then you hit copy and it'll start opening up separate tabs for every single one of those listings. So like while you're working on one listing, it's opening it up in another. Um, sometimes it takes a second. It's probably taking a second right now because I'm live. I'm using a lot of Wi-Fi and computer power right now. So cross listing is probably going to take a second, but it just literally opens up a list per, or a, a Poshmark page with the photos. It'll automatically fill out the title, a description. I'll have to fill in the category and then not new with tags if I need to add another color. And then for some reason, Poshmark has that original price. So I do that and then I'll just hit next and it'll list. And I don't know if you can see up here at the top, the uh, it's opening up more tabs for every single one of those listings that I started cross-listing. So let me close this out. So it will stop cross-listing. Um, so that's that. If you don't use List Perfectly, I mean, here's another plug for you. D if you use code DWD, you'll get 30% off your first month. That's, uh, that's what I can offer you. That's what I can offer you. That's how I cross-list. Um, that's how I prefer it. That's what I do. That is what I do. Steph found the first pair of Zero Toronto high tops. I don't know what the Toronto is off the top of my head. I got to look that one up. Zero Toronto. There we go. Oh, nice. I've never found that model before. Uh, interesting. They're like a canvas material. I've only found Zero a couple times. Those ones, the Zero sell, sells so quick for good money, for great money. So that's a really good find. Uh, what's the minimum profit you'll take on a pair of shoes? Is 15 profit per shoe a good goal or should it be higher? I think 15 per profit per shoe is a good goal. Um, obviously, it just depends. Am I off center here? There we go. Um, it just kind of depends on, uh, first off, how long something's been in my inventory. Um, it depends on what the item is, right? Uh, on a pair of vans that I can literally go into any thrift store in my town and find another pair of vans. Uh, I will be pretty accepting of offers. I try to hold out for a decent price, but like they're vans, I can replace them. I can literally just go to the Goodwill and find another pair and put it, put it in my store. So um, in that scenario, I wanna move my money as fast as possible. If, I, if I'm doubling my money, great. If I'm 1.5ing my money, 
great. Let me just move the money and keep the snowball rolling. But um, if it's a very sought after pair of shoes, like let's use the zeros, for example. Um, I don't know how the market currently is. I haven't found any in a while, but usually there's not very many of those listed and there's a decent amount sold. So uh, in that case, I'll hold out for a higher price because it's a, it's a more sought after, harder to find pair of shoes. It's not, it's not as easily replaceable. So in that case, I'll hold out for a higher profit. Um, but that being said, the average across the board, my average across the board, my average buy cost per pair of shoes is just over 10 bucks. And my average selling price after shipping and fees is just at $30. So on average, I'm tripling my money. Um, but um, bum bum. Steph found Alexander Wang Hills. Nice. I don't think I've ever, that's, that's not true. I sold one pair of Alexander Wangs. I got it in a box from, uh, I want to say, um, what's the company called? Jomar. I think that, I don't even know if they're still in business, but, um, I got in a box from Jomar and, um, they sold pretty quick. I think I sold them for like $200. Uh, so that's an amazing find. Um, Gretchen, hello from Tulsa. Hope you're having a great day. I hope you're having a great day. I was just in Tulsa like two, three, four weeks ago, five weeks ago, six weeks ago, seven weeks ago. I'm just kidding. Uh, semi recently I was in Tulsa, did a podcast with my, my buddy, everybody hates jabber. Um, kid I went to school with back in the hometown of Coffeeville. Um, so if you want to search everybody hates jabber on YouTube, I did a podcast over there. This is just a podcast plug episode. Uh, that one's not mine though. I, I, trying to just, you know, if you guys want to go support them, that'd be awesome. Uh, Matt Price found some good Allen Edmonds, brown leather shoes, great cosmetically, but need a polish. Do you sell as is or take the time to polish? Um, if they're, if they're, um, if they're leather, I'll use the Dr. Wa Dr. Martin's Wonder Balsam and uh, rub it down with that. That is a decent polish, but I don't really do too much more than that. I have edge dressing. Like if the, uh, if the midsole is losing its paint, edge dressing is basically just a paint that I will paint over that with, but that's really the extent of what I do with dress shoes. Um, I just try to get the ones that are in pretty decent condition as as I'm buying them, which is isn't too hard to too hard to do because most dress shoes people are, who are wearing them really aren't wearing them too much. Obviously, some people are. I've, I've definitely found some Allen Edmonds that people have worn a hole through the bottom of them, but uh, most of the time they're in decent condition because people are wearing them to occasions to nice you know events. They're not really running a marathon in them. But yeah, I just used the uh, Dr. Wonder, Dr. Martin's Wonder Balsam and uh, the Flemings, I think the brand is, Flemings Edge Dressing. They come in brown and black. Uh, that's that's really the extent of what I do. Junk Monkey, who was here earlier, I think that he does quite a bit of good work on uh, um, restoring shoes. And so if you want to ask him any questions, I'm sure he could help out a lot more than I could in that, uh, scenario. Cause like I, like I tell you guys, I don't, uh, I don't clean shoes by trade. I sell shoes by trade. So I try to keep the cleaning and rest restoration to a minimum. I find that if I ever pick up a pair of shoes, I was just talking to junk monkey about this last night. If I ever find a pair of shoes that, um, in the store, I'm like, I can clean these. I can fix these. I can repair these, whatever the issue is. I can do it. Um, I'll buy it. I'll take it home and I'll put it in the, I need to take care of this pile. But that pile is also the, I don't want to take care of this pile. Uh, so it just, it, it just ends up sitting. I never, never get around to it because my ambitions at the thrift store, uh, outweighed my real life ambitions, I guess. Well, I said a saying in one of these lives one time and it was, it was pretty good. It was one of the early lives. I said, I, I can't even remember what I said. It was like, uh, make sure your cleaning ambitions. Oh no, you're make sure your purchasing decisions match your cleaning ambitions. <laughs> so I, uh, I try to have my cleaning ambitions in mind when I'm making purchase decisions. <laughs> if that makes sense. Justin, no problemo. Robbie Smith says, does list perfectly unlist on other platforms that your shoes are listed on? No, no, uh, no platform delists for you. Um, they do make it easier if you, like I said, I don't list my items on List Perfectly's website. Uh, Vindu is the same way. Vindu doesn't have that extension that I was explaining. Uh, Vindu makes you list on their platform. I made a video comparing List Perfectly and Vindu if you want to check it out. Uh, it goes really in depth. It's a long one. Uh, but 
a lot of those, um, a lot of like all of the cross listing sites, you still have to manually delist. They do have the feature within list perfectly and in Vendu that if you have your item listed on their marketplace or on their platform, you can hit one button and it will delist from all the platforms. Uh, but since I only list on two platforms, it's just as easy for me to go into Poshmark and delete it instead of going into list perfectly and delete it. So that's why I don't even put them into list perfectly. Um, there's not, there's not some like AI algorithm thing that's out there that will automatically delist items for you once they sell, because it's really hard to know, um, what it, what, like what listings match each other. Um, Brandon says one shop does, uh, I, I'm unaware of this. I haven't used one shop just because they don't have the browser extension like List Perfectly does. Uh, but that could be true. That could be very true. Uh, I know that they are like Vindu in the sense that uh, you have to list on their platform and then cross list from there. You can you can list on eBay and then import, but the cross listing has to be done on there, I believe. Um, but until one of these other places adds in a feature like List Perfectly has that it's platform to platform cross listing, uh, List Perfectly is gonna have my vote. I think it's the fastest way to cross list. Justin says, dance go clogs for or against picking them up for $7.99. Of course, if they don't snap in half. Sure. Um, I think that the regular clogs have slowed down or decreased in value, like haven't been selling for as much as they used to, haven't been selling as fast as they used to. But I mean, if they're in good condition, make sure there's no fraying along the, uh, along the ankles. Uh, that's a common problem. I just make sure that they're in, in great condition. If they have like a print or something on them, if they're like, uh, if there's like a design to them other than just a plain black clog, then it's more likely a definite yes pickup. Um, if they're like Dansko XP's or XP 2.0's, that's even better. But you know, more than likely, more than likely they have gone down in value though, because everything, everything's like that. Everything is going to go like we're going to have new bolos. Like if, if we look at it the, like next year, this time, there's going to be a whole bunch of new shoes that we don't even know about um, that are going to be like the top uh, bolos for every reseller out there. But then as more resellers learn about it, coupled with these brands are getting more and more popular. So then more and more are getting donated. You know how the cycle goes. It's getting a little saturated. Uh, but I'm, I'm still selling them. I think I sold a pair of dance goes, uh, not too long ago. Jody, how's the garage coming along? It is, it is almost finished. Um, finishing touches are, are being done. I just need to hang some lights over my phot photography station. Um, uh, completely unnecessary. I already have the two box lights and one that is currently hanging above it. Uh, but I already have the three other clamp lamp lights. And if I'm going to have them, I might as well use them. So the, the more light, the better, like more lights, not going to help. That's really all I have to do is get those lights set up. Uh, I still have to move, um, a lot of my shoe trees and, um, a lot of our like Halloween and Christmas decorations. So I need to get those. Cause those are all going to go in the garage, obviously. Um, but like the, the work setup, it's going good. The, uh, the shelves are all put up the cleaning station, the shipping station, the photo station, everything's in a nice little, uh, nice little assembly line, a nice little, you know, it's nice. I got a nice little setup in my opinion. I like it. Um, but um, bum bum KB dance, go Mary Jane, especially wedge ones sell great. Yes. The dance, go Mary Janes do so well. The clogs are what I was referring to when I was saying they slowed down a little bit. A lot of their other models, like I found two pairs of dance, go booties recently and those both sold for like 50 to 60 plus shipping and they sold within a couple weeks. They sold fast. It's just the those those classic clogs that have really slowed down a bit. Uh DC Hunter, have you sold APL shoes? Yes, but they don't sell very well. They don't. Um they they don't sell for very much money and they usually take quite a while to sell. But if they're at a decent price, I will pick them up, but I'm not picking up picking them up with the expectation that they're going to sell fast and I don't really like paying up for them. Nessia, hi Dalton, for shoes that have been listed and not sold for months, what is your strategy for getting them sold or do you take the loss and donate it? I don't ever, I, I don't remember the last time I pulled something out of inventory and donated it. Um, I probably should do that sometimes because like I do currently, especially like shoes that I've bought from like Helpsy or Jomar, those like online wholesale companies, like I've bought boxes from them before and my mentality back then was, well, I have it, I might as well list it. So those listings are like currently my oldest active listings. Um, 
Whereas nowadays I'm like, okay, I know this isn't going to sell. I'd rather just donate it. Uh, but what I do is after like 90 days or so, I start uh, doing a markdown sale and marking it down, you know, 10%, 20%, 30%, depending on how long uh, they've been listed. And um, any anything that's been listed for too long, like... Honestly, I'd, I'd consider over 90 days. If you can get it on top of it where you're relisting things after 90 days, that's even better. Uh, you can relist after the 90 days, make sure that all the item specifics are right, uh, make sure the title is as good as you can possibly make it, um, maybe promote it, maybe double check the comps, put the price at a more realistic price point. Um, but, you know, mark down sales, maybe run some coupons. Uh, relist, make sure that all of your listing is 100% accurate. Maybe take better pictures if that's something that you need to do. Uh, because I know that my, my photo taking evolved over a very long time. And some of my earliest photos that I took were terrible and maybe I need to, you know, re-photograph them. Just a, just a few options. Uh, the sports picker guy with a dollar 99 super chat. Thank you so much. I seriously, I appreciate the support. Thank you for being here. Uh, Julie says, hi Dalton. I believe that you take offers on your shoes. How do you not get inundated with low ball offers? Do you counter upon counter to get the price closer to asking? Uh, yeah, I mean, I listen, low ball offers are a good thing because it's someone showing interest in your listing. And that's another thing that's going to help it in the eBay algorithm. So the more low ball offers that you're getting and the more times you counter offer, the more activity there is on your listing. So it's going to be, um, Showing up. KB, thank you so much for the $1.99 super chat. I seriously appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Um, <laughs> um, what were we saying? I just lost my train of thought. You guys are, uh, you guys are too generous. Um, do you counter upon, counter upon counter? Okay, we're talking about counter offers. Okay, so when your low ball offer comes in, it's it's adding activity to the listing. It shows that people are interested in it. So eBay is going to push it to more people. Uh, I always counter offer, but I'm not going to take a low ball offer, obviously. It I'm going to keep countering. Eventually I'll get to my lowest price point. And on eBay, luckily they can only counter offer or send four offers. Um, so it's it's not like they can just keep annoying you. On Poshmark, they can keep annoying you. And at a certain point, I'll just ignore them. Um, but I'm, I'm always counter offering. I don't, I don't decline anything. Um, can you quickly recommend a cleaning setup for a beginner? Yeah. Um, Magic Erasers, they don't have to be name brand. You can get the big bulk packs on Amazon. Uh, Magic Erasers, um, Dawn Power Wash is a great uh, spray cleaner to clean the midsoles. Uh, get a, a brush, like a stiff bristle brush to brush dirt and stuff off the bottom of the shoes. Um, you can get a second stiff bristle brush that you can use with the Dawn on the bottom of the shoes to clean the bottom of the shoes. Um, and then have like one dry brush and one wet brush that you only use to clean the dry one only used to, um, knock dirt out of the bottom. I recommend getting like a pick, like a, like a metal pick that you can get in the tread and get rocks and stuff out of, uh, that right there, that'll get you and obviously a rag to wipe things up, but that'll get you pretty far. If you are, um, picking up shoes that don't need much cleaning, if you're staying away from shoes that take a long time to clean, um, that's all you really need to get started. If you want to get more in depth, I do have a video that covers all my cleaning products, just how to clean shoes in 2023 or something like that. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll like it. Uh, James, since you're in Florida now, do you find it harder to pick up inventory during the winter tourist season? Uh, I've been in Florida for like five years now. I've been reselling f since, uh, 2018. I think I've, n I've never had an issue with inventory. There's so much overflow of inventory in Florida year round that that's, it's never an issue. Um, but bum bum KB wants to know how many people right now are listing. If you're one of the people that are, have this on in the background while you're working, uh, come over to the computer or come over to your phone, wherever it's at. Let me know if you're listing right now. KB's listing KB. Also, I just noticed that was your first ever super chat. I didn't even know they put little balloons with a number on the, on that. So that's cool. Appreciate you. Um, but bum 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 DC Hunter, I want to be honest. I buy Hoka's and Brooks for around twenty to thirty dollars each, but I know for sure I can double my money and more if they are in good condition. Yeah, I I buy Hoka's and, uh, and Brooks for twenty to thirty dollars all the time, um, as long as they are models that justify that price and um, in a condition that justifies that price. Good condition, newer models of Hoka's and Brooks you can pick up at twenty and thirty dollars uh, all day and still make good money. So I 
I don't blame you. That's exactly what I do. A lot of, a lot of resellers are going to pass right by those. Um, if you're buying them in a thrift store, I don't know where you're picking them up. Um, but, um, if they're at a thrift store, especially most people are going to see that $20, $30 price tag, scoff at it, maybe complain about it on their Instagram story and then move on. Um, but in reality, you can still make a $20, $30 profit on those shoes. Uh, what's up, Kelsey? Thanks for, thanks for the comment. Thanks for saying hi. Uh, do you think Y2K skate shoes might be coming back? The bulky DC, DC skate shoes, for example, also look out for iPad skate shoes from the, from the late 90s, early 2000s. Yes, I do. I think that they are already pretty back. Um, any, anything Y2K. Put, put Y2K in a listing title and your views are going to go up. Um, don't lie, obviously. Make sure it's actually a Y2K item. But yeah, that stuff that stuff's in. That stuff's popular right now. Uh, the best shoe cleaner. I, I like the Dawn, Dawn Power Wash. I mix it with the uh, Mr. Clean Super Freak. Super Freak? Clean Freaks? <laughs> Mr. Clean Clean Freak. Uh, those two are really good. I don't like any of the... Let me rephrase that. I do like the actual shoe cleaners. Um, like FZ150 works amazing. Uh, Rejuvenator's products, they work amazing. But those are more for projects, right? Shoes that like you need to like deep clean. I have FC150, I have Rejuvenator. I use both of them when I want to deep clean a pair of shoes. But the selling, like it better be a nice pair of Jordans or something that like the price of cleaning it justifies the effort. Or if I'm like making a video, you know, like a TikTok of me cleaning shoes, then then sure, yes, I will use those. But for like 99% of the shoes that just need minimal cleaning, just need a little light touch up on the midsole or the outsole, I'm just using the Dawn Power Wash or the Mr. Clean Clean Freak. Um, James is listing. Michelle's listing while she listens. Kelsey is listing. Jody's listing. Look at everybody just being productive. Um, what's your ideal store size in terms of quantity of shoes and sales per day? I, I mean, that's, that's, that is a personal question. Not, not in terms of, I don't want to answer it. I'm just saying that that varies from people to people. I need to be selling 12 to 15 pairs of shoes every single day at my margins to, uh, comfortably live. Um, so yeah, fit 12 to 15 sales per day. Uh, I'm not hitting that right now because, you know, I haven't been listing for the past two weeks, but we'll get there. We'll get back up to that. Um, but that's, that's what I need to be at. Um, I don't think your store size matters though. Store size is irrelevant. I mean, if it, yes, the bigger your store is, the more sales will trickle in. Uh, but there's so many ways that you can like sell a bunch without having a huge store. Just the more in demand your items are, the better. Like I'd, I'd rather have a super high sell through rate than a large store. The large store does have benefits, but I think the super high sell through rate outweighs those benefits. Um, E6000 glue to glue soles back to the shoe. Um, I use Starbond, Starbond, but that's another thing I stay away from. I don't, I don't like, I don't like having to glue shoes back together. Where can you get the best deals for shoe cleaner? Um, the Dawn Power Wash and the, uh, Mr. Clean, Clean Freak. I just buy those from Publix and Walmart, sometimes on Amazon. Um, if you want to get rejuvenator, I have a discount code, um, dealing with Dalton will get you 10% off of rejuvenator products. Uh, but like I said, that is only for like deep cleaning. I know there's a lot of people out there, uh, that clean, that resell shoes that use the rejuvenator brushes and their soap to clean the bottoms of shoes. Like I use the Mr. Clean. Uh, I just think the Mr. Clean is cheaper and I'm using so much of it that I need the cheaper option. Uh, the rejuvenator stuff works though. So like, if you want to pick up rejuvenator, uh, dealing with Dalton will get you 10, 10% off. Uh, but I, I just go to Walmart and get the clean freak and, uh, power wash. Those are the go-to. I also like the, they, they like foam up, like the spray bottles are just, the spray bottles are cool. I just nerd out over this, the spray bottles. Uh, but will those other clean cleaners save you 150 bucks? No, probably not. Only FZ 150 will save you 150 bucks. Justin, 110 listed, 179 sold, and shipping 14 order orders right now over the weekend. Small stores can definitely crush it still. Love that. That's amazing. See, that's an example. Justin Justin sold more than he listed um, over the weekend. So his store shrank over the weekend instead of getting bigger. Um, sold and shipping 14 orders. right now. Over the weekend. Um, I don't know if this is over the weekend. I don't know if I'm reading this properly, but like, 110 listed, 180 sold. The store's shrinking. Um, 
which, you know, obviously isn't like sustainable, like eventually you need to be listing more than you're selling. But this, this is a perfect example of sell through rate outweighing having a big store. Um, Samantha, do you have a long-term 10 to 20 year plan? Do you plan on expanding, selling, sourcing more, keeping the same hiring employees or just playing it by ear? Uh, I'm just playing it by ear. I don't really have a 10 to 20 year plan. I don't think I'll be reselling shoes. If you listen to the podcast, we kind of talked about this. I don't think I'll be reselling shoes in 20 years. Um, I do. I, I really enjoy what I do. I love reselling shoes. I love the fact that it frees up my time and I am in control of my day. That's my favorite part about it. Um, that outweighs the love of the actual work. Um, I do love thrifting and the treasure hunt and all that, but just the simple fact that I'm in, in charge of my own time, that's what I'm super in love with. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, we'll see. <laughs> what up y'all? What's up? I'm just key popping in Uh, last few minutes of the stream. Oh, am I over time already? Oh, we already hit an hour. Great. Ethan's going to yell at me. Uh, fun fact, my car clock is still an hour off, so I missed the whole video. Jess, you're going to have to rewatch it. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. Next week, by next week, we'll have that We'll have that car clock fixed, and we'll be here on time. That being said, um, I do want to know if you guys prefer the time of this live. I know I have a lot of people that are on the West Coast that can't make it because it's still only like, what would that be? 1230 would be... 9 30 a.m. and a lot of people don't want to hop on a live at 9 30 a.m. Um, I'm thinking about changing the time but I also this time works best for me but I do like the idea of like making the community here is a, a little stronger if that makes sense um, like the more people that we can get in here the more names that I can be engaging with every week um, I I'm really interested in that idea but I, I do also like how small things are. I like seeing the same few names here every week, but like, you know, if you guys have any like suggestions on what time you, you would want this, or if you want it to stay the same time, uh, I, I'm, I'm open to uh, suggestions. I'm, I'm sure I will get most of the suggestions from people that are rewatching this. Um, but yeah, if you have any thoughts on the time of this, just let me know. Um, let me get these last few questions, guys. If you have any questions, drop them now. I don't know that I'll be able to answer all of them. I got to bounce, uh, but I'm going to try to answer all of these ASAP. How can I get people to recognize my shoe cleaning YouTube channel I'm going to make? Um, okay. So I think that that is an amazing idea for a YouTube channel. If you love cleaning shoes, genius shorts, TikToks, and Instagram reels, uh, not so much on Instagram, but on TikTok and on YouTube shorts, if you structure the videos properly, just look at the FC150 video that I made or the um, other cleaning video that I made. They blew up. Yes, I'm reviewing another product. I'm assuming you don't have your own product, so that's a good place to start. Just copy my videos. Literally copy the videos that I made. People, for some reason, love watching people clean shoes. So shorts and um, TikToks. Amazing way to grow the channel. Uh, get, get attention. Um, and then ranking something in search cleaning shoes is like how to clean shoes is searched all the time how to clean white shoes how to clean heels how to clean suede how to clean leather how to clean new buck how to clean the, just make every single one of those videos and get them to like google do your research on how to uh, get a video to rank seo wise in the youtube search algorithm and then in those videos you can put like your uh your affiliate links and then you'll start making money on day one um i just got hyped up i i I like talking about this. I'm sorry. Um, that's how I do that. Is there a source for insoles like Nike? I got a React and Presto and Rookie Mistake. Didn't no didn't notice the lack of insoles. Anything you can do or just go get some Dr. Scholl's. I just pull them out of shoes that I don't end up selling. You can go to your Goodwill bins and go to the throwbacks and any insoles that are in good condition, pull them out of those shoes and then you'll pay by the pound. That's the cheapest way to get insoles. Just make sure they're in good condition. Um... But the Dr. Scholl's are work, will work. I don't think that there's a way that you can just buy a bunch of uh, Nike branded insoles in bulk for a price point that makes sense. Apollo just found some Salomon Contra Grip at Goodwill yesterday. Let's go. That's amazing. Love that. Any shoe brands models you avoid now that you would have picked up early in your reselling career? Um, we kind of touched on this, how I was saying like brands and models ebb and flow like a year from now. There's going to be brands that uh, we don't know about now and brands that we just don't pick up anymore. Um, I, I'm, I'm blanking. I'm blanking. There's, there's plenty. I'm sure there's plenty. 
I don't know. I don't know. I'm blanking. Definitely the models, I'd say just older models of Brooks and older models of Hoka's I'm passing on a lot more than I used to. Older models of any of those main main brands I'm passing on a lot more often than I used to. Um, what would you say are the best sources to get shoes from that you are looking to resell? Uh, thrift stores and flea markets and stuff. Anything in bulk, no one's going to tell you the supplier because the supplier, if the supplier is good, they're not sharing. Um, so you just got to got to do your own research. Um, KB, California is fine with the time. Okay, KB's in California. Love that. Um, T, 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 T. What all taxes do you have to pay as a reselling business? Uh, income taxes and all those other taxes. Uh, if you just take 15%, if you open up a sec separate bank account, have a personal bank account, a business bank account, and a taxes bank account, a taxes savings account, and 15% of all the money that you uh, deposit into your bank, if you put 15% of that into your taxes, you'll be covered. Uh, but um, bum bum what? Uh, California here, anytime is fine. Cool, Steph. Okay, just make sure. Kelsey, that was the nicest thing you've ever said. I appreciate you. Uh, Jennifer B., thank you. Carly has made it in. What is up, bestie? Um, you ever mess around with Marshalls and Nike outlets flips? Yeah, from time to time, but thrift stores are just more consistent for me. Um, time is fine with ever. Okay. All right. Everybody here. I mean, you guys are here. Time is fine. All right. Got caught up. We're cutting it here. Any more questions? My favorite, sh my favorite shoe cleaner. We already talked about this. Um, I'm cutting it here again. A few things to mention podcast. I'm about to record episode two with Ethan. It is on all streaming platforms here on YouTube. The, the YouTube channel is linked in the description. Go follow my second channel listing with Dalton. If you want to uh, work along with me as I'm listing, I will be um, streaming tomorrow, probably tomorrow. I'll be streaming tomorrow on Twitch at dealing with Dalton. Um, if you want to buy this shirt, it's on my website. I haven't plugged that. Uh, shoe trees on the website as always. Uh, we're doing this every Tuesday at noon 30 Eastern time. I'll see you guys next week.